Hello everyone, my name is Antezil, and today we'll be playing as the United Kingdom. We'll be doing a few things today. We'll be putting Edward VIII in power, and following the Monarchist branch, we'll be getting our old dominions back that will break away from us by then. We will put an American monarchy in charge of the United States, putting you on the track for the achievement William Wallace. And finally, we'll be doing the Imperial Federation as non-aligned. That's uh, easier said than done. I think it's the most difficult one of the, the entire batch, but uh, we'll see it through. And while we do that, Imperial Federation is never uh, fast or um, easy, we'll uh, do some conquering left and right, probably somewhere over here. Let's see what we can do. What does this entail? You have to go all the way over here to a change in course, King's Party, and then here, unite the Anglosphere. Uh, so this would be a logical choice to start, but I'm going to do one focus before that, and that's limited rearmament. As for technology and research, I'm going to start with 1936 submarine because we're well behind on that. Mechanical computing because we already have electronic engineering, basic machine tools, and construction. As for construction, itself we're going to start with a bunch of civilian factories and some other stuff will come along later we'll try to get some stuff going here um, some support equipment and artillery is needed the rest can be put on guns and we can delete these things we got some factories left and we can put two of them on trucks they are not in the starting production queue and put that last one back on infantry equipment we'll sort out the planes later as for the fleet, just finish whatever is here. 36 divisions in the army, just um, gather them up on Bristol and convert them to the colonial garrison for now. We'll uh, do more stuff with them later. And we can go to 5 speed and uh, we can go. Also, I advise you to get all of your air force that's not attached to any aircraft carriers. Bring the boys home and exercise. King George V dies. We now have Edward as a king, draining our stability. Limited rearmament is done, and now we will go for a changing course. Our 36 troops have arrived. I'd like to divide them as follows. Now we have one team of 12 divisions and three teams of 8. And we can send them to their destinations. The 12 divisions can go here to Newfoundland. The first batch of eight divisions can go to the South African border here. The next can go here to Christmas Island. And the final batch can go to Fiji. As for the South African ones, um, it's nice to put one piece of infrastructure here and to have a look at the supply here. This is a good supply area, there's a supply hub here, but once you go to war with South Africa, which will happen, this line will be cut off and this one is not connected. So, just, ooh, this looks ambitious. Just connect them. Put these two on top and it'll be fine. Changing course is done. We have some time before we can do the King's Party, so we'll do Reinforce the Empire, Service Overseas, and Encourage Colonial Elite. We're not spending over any of our political power, by the way. Not showing you all of the research in this game. I'm branching out into tanks. If that's not your thing, that's fine. I'm, I recommend getting, also, getting fighters also. And I'm just keeping the rest up to date. In addition to those armies that are already on their way, I advise you to get six cavalry divisions and set them here on Scottish Highlands, or this port here, Lanark, to take care of either in Ireland later. Here is the Edward VIII abdication crisis. It's a series of events that usually you will just pick this one, the king has to abdicate, and you'll go in whatever branch is left. This one is an Easter egg branch that can lead you to uh, Elizabeth as your queen in the game. Yes, the same Elizabeth that is still in power right now. We are going to assist on a royal marriage. Other events will pop up where you will have ch the chance to change your mind or misclick, more likely actually. Um, every time you should just not pick the option to abdicate and pick the other one. It 
will give you debuffs, buffs, uh, political power, minus political power, the works. And let's continue down the focus tree. Here's one. This is the abdication side, uh, thing. And this is minus 75 political power. Ugh. Click. Well, here we get some more political power and a date for the marriage. You can now see how long, much longer you have to suffer. The cabinet resigns. That's a hefty debuff. And we are without a government at this moment. Here's another event, the Dominions break with the crown, and we are now left without Dominions, except for Malaya. And that's why we've been sending all those armies around the world, of course. Encourage colonial elite is done. Now the abdication crisis will be last for 48 more days, so we'll just not take a focus. So we can immediately jump into the King's Party. Got a nice stockpile of infantry equipment. We take these 12 divisions of army one and set them to the regular templates well, we almost have enough infantry equipment should be fine and here it is the royal marriage of edward the eighth well, that means we can go for the king's party do so immediately it's about time we start building an intelligence agency mi6 is coming up the king's party is done and we'll go for god save the king and we have the ability to hire the trio of advisors, Churchill, Mosley, and here he is, David Lloyd George. He's the silent workers of this government, and he gives extra political power, so get him. We'll get the other two later, perhaps. Also, convert those cavalry divisions to motorized. We don't have the trucks to fully equip them yet, but it doesn't matter. We'll fill those trucks up eventually. Pakistan declared war on India. That usually results in a white peace. I was expecting uh, Burma and Bangladesh to rise up. When we have some spies, we'll put them to work in the United States. God save the king is done, and we'll appeal to imperial loyalists. Also getting quite a decent amount of political power now. Oh nice, Carta Spain spawned. Can I help them? I actually can. I could send volunteers. Ah, well. For another day, perhaps. I'll send them lend lease now. Maybe that'll help them. Uh, about a thousand of these guns in a month. Appeal to Imperial Loyalists is done. Where are we? And we'll bring the Dominions back into the fold. Now we go to the Decisions tab and we can see... We can see these four decisions, Forment, Comedian, Uprising, and all the rest. Now, I'm kind of an OCD person on this one. I'd like to click all four of them at once. Why is that? Um, the Uprising will create an Imperial Canada and an Imperial South Africa. And I just can't stand it if only one or two of them are Imperial. And we're in no particular rush for this guide, so I'll just uh, wait until I have 400 political power and I'll get it done. Please note that these decisions also require a certain amount of infantry equipment, support equipment and total artillery, but it doesn't actually take them away from your stockpile, so you just have to have them. And we have more than enough, so this will be fine. 400 political power and we can foment four uprisings. This is also the time to uh, exercise or train 12 new reserve divisions. I set them on a port so they can ship out quickly. Got more factories left, so we'll build more civilian factories. We got all the military factories right now that we need, so we'll just build up our economy so we'll be better and stronger later on. Bring the Dominions back into the fold is done, and we'll consolidate the British Isles. We now have war goals against all of the Dominions. Even if you're feeling particularly lucky, do note that Canada is guaranteed by the United States. I'm going to wait for those uprisings. India and Pakistan signed a white peace. Burma rose up. I'm still expecting Bangladesh here, but uh, we'll see. Here we are. Bangladesh declared war in Pakistan. And here are the decisions done. We have one, two, three, four uprisings. Now, just go to all of those dominions, except for Canada, and declare war. 
to make it nice and clean. And there's New Zealand here. Declare war. Just wait for the decisions to update and you can see here ally the Canadian uprising and all the others. Click, 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 click. Here we go. And a lot of events pop up and we get accused of all sorts of stuff here. But now it's time to get to work. The Canadian army shipped them off to Nova Scotia. South African army. You're allied now with these guys, so just, uh, well, you know, re redraw your front line and set them on an attack offensive order. This is also a good time because we're not having a good time with war propaganda just yet. Do war propaganda against South Africa, so take your sweet time here. Australia. Set those guys on this port here. Press S to split. Press H to hold them and send the other half to Western Australia. Give those guys a fallback line over here. And select everyone and put the rest over here. You'll need some war score. Well, you can see this is going to be a problem. Um, so we'll need to divide it along those lines. And here we have a few more units and send it to Christchurch with an offensive order on Wellington. That's quite a lot of stuff to do, right? Political power is coming in and we got a big wish list. But with our atrocious stability, I suggest you go for improved worker conditions now and probably again later. Our reserve divisions are done and ship them off to Ceylon. Consolidate British Isles is done and we'll go over Ceylon forward operating base. We now have a war goal against Ireland and let's make use of it. Declare war immediately. Now you'll note the Irish have some troops but they don't have any troops here. So just uh, pin what they have here and use these guys to just snake to their victory points. They'll join Canada's faction but they don't stand a chance really. That's Ireland already. Have a check on these other guys. Make sure they get some war participation. In Canada it's essential you capture St. Lawrence. And the Canadian imperialists already do that for us. Wellington seems to be doing alright. Canada and snaking around. They're almost dead anyway. Sign on forward. Operating base is done and we'll reclaim the jewel in the crown. We're almost done, done with our own dominions and then it's time to grab back whatever is going on here. And here we are. All the dominions are in the peace deal but nothing is happening there. We just take the Irish estates and we're done. What's now happening? We have an Imperialist Canada, Imperialist South Africa, Imperialist Australia, and Imperialist New Zealand. All oh, these new cool flags. Now we're doing Reclaim the Jewel in the Crown, so we'll get a war goals on all four of these states here Burma, Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan. That's our final push to get the Old Dominions back. All the old dominions? No, not entirely. There's still this matter to take care of. But that's for later. Let's first get all of our troops over to Ceylon. Merge up those armies and also set them on Ceylon. And this final purple fleet here is the one in Southeast Asia. They'll be enough for a naval invasion, so just bring them along as well. We're getting a nice amount of equipment, so Let's train about 48 of cavalry division, set them on low priority and set the highest priority to garrisons. We don't have the manpower for that, so let's fix that. Let's go to limited conscription. Those extra armies are, of course, to get our old colonies back here. And it's about time we go to military factories. The next political power will go to any form of poor mobilization anyway. And we'll set up a naval invasion something like that. And here's Reclaim the Jewel in the Crown. 
We can unite the Anglosphere for the war go against the United States, but uh, that would be a bit pointless at this time. So we'll go for general rearmament right now. The army of Harold Alexander is done. We will uh, set the fleet up here for naval invasion support. We'll set the order to go and we'll declare war on India. And the naval invasion will launch. Delete the order. They are already launching. And we'll use the freed up slots to set up another invasion on the west side here. Um, just um, set them up over here. We're seeing some resistance here, but it's probably nothing we can't handle. And the port is already ours. So collect the entire army and give them a battle order here. And just uh, set a line here to the south. Clear that up first before going north. Beautiful. The other naval invasion went off without a hitch. So just um, put the entire army up there and set a battle line up there for the north. I'm declaring war on the other pieces of India that's left just so they know what's coming. No, not really. Why I'm doing that is because if I puppet India, which I will do, sometimes I cannot call them into other wars. So once those, if that war is already going on, I don't think that problem exists. That's India. Just puppet them. Now set your armies up against Pakistan on the one side. Bangladesh here on the other side. We'll deal with Burma later. Here's Pakistan. They make a nice puppet, so just puppet them. We'll take the industrial effort and research slot, and then we'll take the war goal for the United States. And that's Burma. That's a nice one to puppet. Next up on the chopping block is, of course, the United States. If you've seen any of my videos where I take on the United States early, it's pretty much the same all the time. I just put one army up here to take care of Philadelphia and New York. I put a second army on this bulge here. They will encircle and kill some armies. The motorized will assist with that over here. And when these armies are ready, I'll just uh, deploy them over the rest of the lines. They don't do any attacking, they just hold front lines. We'll also make a collaboration government in the US. Industrial effort is done. The troops are still on their way, but it is time to unite the Anglosphere. French Commune joined Comintern. Czechoslovakia joins Comintern too. Um, this has happened before to me in a test run, and it's actually good for us. This means this war will last for a while, and none of these guys will join and the, the faction the Americans will invariably make. If that does happen, if uh, the French and or the Czechs join uh, the USA, you'll just have to do a good job getting enough war participation and getting the United States for yourself. Meanwhile, my uh, land lease towards Carlos Spain is um, helping tremendously, it seems. United Anglosphere is done. We'll go for reassess continental commitments. In other news, I'm going to create a faction with the Carlists, because, well, I'm never able to do that. And I'll just call ourselves the Allies. Let's go. Declare war on the United States. Call in the Canadians. Send those boys to go. Now, you've probably seen me do this before, but I'll use my motorized to micro around a bit. 
We already cut off a part of the American army. And that's New York. All right, with the Northeast cut off here, it's time to reorganize. Get one of the armies up to uh, attack Chicago and the surroundings and get the other army on the other half of the line. Something like this. And they're going southwards. Press Ctrl B to railroad them to their positions and then set the order to go. There's not much Americans left. What I'd like to do with my motorized is make a push for Florida because once you make it through the lines, it's usually empty. Extra research slot is done. We'll go for Commonwealth ties. Meanwhile, the United States must be on its last legs by now. They are a 96% because of a collaboration government too. So let's just snake a few victory points. And here we are. That's the United States. Now for forming the monarchy, you need all of the United States as either your puppets or annexed. Puppeting is uh, usually best in this case. Otherwise, you'll just have huge occupation zones. There we go. Satellite to Philippines. Oh. And we're done already. British North American territories was puppeted. Now here you have the decision to install the American monarchy. If you have the territory annexed, you can also give all of this territory to Canada and make them the North American Dominion. I'll do that um, somewhat more in depth in another video when I do the British Empire. For now we will just install the monarchy. Great Britain installs American monarchy. Here we are. Our lovely wife is now leader of the United Kingdom of America. Her Majesty Queen Wallace, first of her name, titles, titles. It's an easter egg mostly, it's not that useful, but hey, an American puppet can always be in handy. At the same time we are um, helping out the Carlists. I'm also going to involve myself with um, the Germans and the French. I'm justifying a war goal and gone the Netherlands. I'm going to join the side against the Germans because they are the strongest at this time. We'll do all the development uh, focuses of the Commonwealth ties, including Indian autonomy. See if we can get an Imperial Federation going. French Commune declared war on Imperial Khmer. Unitary Laos, Republic of Vietnam. Oh, that's swell. Okay. That's the anarchist. Italy is um, eating the French. If I want to get in on that, that better be soon. That's the Spanish Civil War. I'm going for Germany next, 20 days. That should get them right and worried. There we go. And that's the Netherlands satellite, the Dutch East Indies. And take all states. Put these boys on the border with Germany. We're lucky to hold. But what I want is military access to France so I can help them. Now what the hell, let's go. Declare war. Sending my motorized divisions to Paris. Germans are pushing back. That's fine. Naval invasion of Italy is launching. And we are landing in a mostly empty Italy. We split Italy through the middle. Let's see if we can uh, bring them down fast. The fall of Rome. Glorious. Italians up in France aren't looking that hot either. Probably getting some angry letters from home.
meanwhile, I was also justifying on the Mexicans. That's Italy gone. And just some pockets of Germans to clean up now. Quite a bit, actually. Simply going to uh, destroy Germany now. Germany seems mostly empty. Well, we cut off a piece of Germany here. All right, let's race for Berlin. Fall of Berlin. Sadly, I didn't get it. But that does mean the war is almost over. Let's march on Munich. And here we are. We don't have the uh, most war score, that's all on the, the Soviets. They're puppeting Mexico, Bosnets, Finland, and Karalia. All right. Well, it's border core, of course. There's a lot of so small Soviet puppets all over the place. What is this? Nation Francaise is still at war. Oh, wow, well, all right. French Commune, Austrian Soviet Republic, Kashubia Silesia, but I got Germany myself, Italy, Hungary, and Bulgaria. So I got the important bits. Now what's left to do? Well, set up for a war with the Soviets, of course, and um, get the Imperial Federation, I think. I'm going to prepare to fight the Belgians and then the French. Romania joins Japan. This is going to be a messy. Develop South Africa is done. Development is all over done. You need uh, quite a bit of political power to hold the Imperial Conference, so I'll hold off on it for now and go for better fighters. Justification on Belgium is complete, and we'll just go for France next. It's 20 days only. And that's Belgium gone. Now do note, the French no longer have disjointed government, so it's not going to be as easy as walking into Paris. Still, that's going to be the first stop to everything. And here are the Greeks joining the Allies. Now we're ready to go. These are all Soviet troops. I don't know if the French have any troops. Let's find out. Declare war. We're not going to uh, call in any allies just yet. All well, the Soviets are. I just want to take care of the French first. fighter command and then I'll start gathering up political power for getting the Imperial Conference. The <clears throat> Maginot Line is encircled. And that's France again. <clears throat> fighter command is done. We'll save up political power for a bit and then go for the Imperial Conference. Time to call in Germany. It's probably not going to make much of a difference. These guys are defending. I'm not going to push through the Sudeten fortress. These guys want to attack, but I'm not going to. Everything's going to be Mr. Dempsey's army. Kashubian commune has capitulated. Now I want Silesia out of here. Now it's entirely possible to swing around here and take Czechoslovakia from the inside. They have all their troops on the forts, and this here is not fortified. 
but it's a risky maneuver. However, I like risky maneuvers. Well, forts are a problem if they are manned, so this is looking good. Well, that's the checks cut in half, that's good. And that's Czechoslovakia. Well, you think that, but there are still like a zillion Soviet troops there. Now uh, we'll just have to mop those up. 500 political power seems well enough, more than enough really, to do hold the Imperial Conference. I have some diplomats out in the field. And I'll also improve relations with all of my dominions. Well, let's finally Czechoslovakia cleaned up. Let's see if we can cut off a piece of Poland and trap as many of these Soviet divisions as we can. But first, here's the Imperial Conference. And here we are. Well, let's discuss all of these. Discuss Imperial Defense. And just spend all the political power. Discuss Imperial Trade. Discuss Imperial Economy. And finally the Imperial Federation itself. And yes, everyone accepts, even India. It's also always the most difficult one. Now it's time to uh, lower their autonomy and uh, integrate them. Great success indeed. I haven't been able to do this in a while, snaking through such large territories. And you can seriously ask yourself if this is a smart idea. So let's chip away at this and see if we can make it after all. While all these troops are moving out, I might get another shot at this. Here we go. Warsaw surrounded. Get him. Well, I did manage to cut off this entire piece of Poland. Very happy with that. The French commune declared war on the state of Jolof. State of Jolof has joined my faction. What the, in the world is the state of Jolof? Ah, Senegal. Cool. Learned something new today. It's getting a bit busy here, but I'm uh, cleaning up. What a mess. And that's a lot of Soviet troops dead. Not a lot of troops left on the border, guys. Poland has capitulated. That's not doing wonders for my front lines, but you can see there are barely any Soviet troops here. Did I get them all inside Poland, in Czechoslovakia? Well, that's doubtful, of course, but we can hope. Meanwhile, it really looks like the Soviet Union is empty. According to my intelligence, they have like more than 100 divisions, but I have no idea where they are. Did they send them all over the world to all of these puppets? It seems likely, because, well, there are Soviets here, and there are Soviets here and here, but, well, there is a few here, but it's, it's pathetically few. Leningrad is mine already. I'm going to start a land lease with uh, Dominion of India to get them down a little faster so I can build inside them. Because um, all the other Imperial Dominions, they are already um, way down where they belong. It's just Dominion of India that needs to get way down there. And it's the only one I can build inside of. So. 
Closing in on Moscow. Moscow's mine. Soviets are uh, certainly not going to last much longer. And we can walk into Stalingrad using my tanks as a diversion. Well, those are the big victory points the Soviets have. Well, we need quite a bit more territory, but there's hardly any Soviets left. And here's the surrender of the Soviet Union and a lot of their people. Puppets, allies, etc. I have virtually all of the war score. And here we are, we took 272 states and we are really becoming Great Britain now. Well, Japan is left as aggressor. I'm supporting China so they may last a bit longer. So let's help out the Chinese. Japan declared war on me. Well, not much of a choice left then. British Raj is ready to be annexed. I've not been taking a focus and we can now take the Imperial Federation. And here goes my naval invasion. Well, let's have a look over here. And there is Hiroshima. 14 more divisions eager to join us. Rip my fleet. Oops. And here is the focus. The Imperial Federation is done. Beautiful. You get a nice cool flag. You don't get that nice jewel in there if India doesn't join. And we are now the Imperial Federation. Sadly, no cores here, but it's all right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Go for resistance suppression now because I have so many territories. I just want the big blob. Rise of the Imperial Federation. And here we are. And here we are. China took some China. That's good. They took North Korea. Well, okay. And we are pretty much done here. We have the Imperial Federation. We span the globe. We have a monarchy in the United States. Well, the United Kingdom of America. As an added bonus, we are friends with our allies, the Spanish Kingdom. Imperial Federation is all over. And it's only 1942. Well, I hope you enjoyed this campaign. I certainly did. I always enjoy making the Imperial Federation. It's more of an end goal than a, a means. You don't form the Imperial Federation to go conquering. At least, usually you don't. It's something you strive towards while doing other stuff, like forming the Kingdom of America. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.